Hi there guys, this is Nikhil from Greedy Tech and these are some of the must-have apps on your Lenovo K4 Note. So guys, there are some apps that you must definitely have and there are some apps which are alternative for something you already have. And I'm just going to mention a few apps that come pre-installed too, just so that you can take complete advantage of that. So guys, firstly, this is the cam scanner and it is actually a document scanner. On the free version, you can simply take pictures and enhance those images and make them as good as scanned documents on but on the pro version you, you have options to export them to evernote or dropbox or any other cloud-based storage so you have some cool features like that only in the pro version if you are interested you can use my link down below to have access to the pro version for one month for free so guys the next app in our list is shuttle so this is the app and this is a material design based music player app so it doesn't have many bells and whistles but it really works well and the UI is as I've said material design so it looks really cool. The next app is TSF Shell the one that I'm currently using. So let me just give you a quick demonstration of what it can do. So this is your app drawer. So you have a lot of transitions, animations. You can sort them according to date or time. You can change the effects. So this is the TSF shell launcher. I guess in India it is for free and at some places it is a paid app. I'm not pretty sure about that but in India it is free. So guys the next app is for the VR or the Google Cardboard. As this device comes with a VR mode and a dedicated VR headset. This is a definitely must have app. These are some nice videos by Discovery Channel. So I have tried it using the Cardboard mode and the Lenovo's VR mode looks better. So the next app is ES File Explorer. So just to scratch the surface of this application, it's a file manager. You can even access your files in the OTG pen drive. You can backup apps, you can restore the apps, you can uninstall the apps from this particular application. You can scan through your entire internal SD or external SD card to check to see which applications are taking up more space on your device. You can access cloud storage, you can browse using this particular application. So this is an all-in-all, -all. so this is basically an all-in-one and one-in-all application. Next we have UC Browser. So this has some nice data saving feature, some nice gestures and it comes with ad blocker pre-installed but it has these annoying notifications and it pops up ads every time. So I would suggest you to simply block these notifications. Simply press and hold on the notification and click this i button over here and then disable that toggle to completely disable that notifications from that particular application. So do give UC browser a try. Next we have Google Keep. So this is a note taking app from Google. So the best thing about it is its collaboration feature. You can easily share notes with your friends, anyone just using their Gmail account or their mail ID. You can even add reminders. You can have a checklist or a normal note. You can change colors for this notes and you can do all sort of stuff. So use that for taking down small notes and if you want anything bigger you can always use Evernote. Next we have Lemma which is a location based automation app. So this particular app note downs the cell towers in your area and based on those cell towers identifies where you are. For example in areas we have only two sections one is home and work. So as of now I'm at my home and I can press and hold on home and say start learning and I can specify the time for which I'll be at home. Let's say eight hours. So for this eight hours, it'll simply learn all the cell phone tower names in my area. And whenever I'm in this area or whenever I'm in this cell phone tower signal range, it'll assume that I'm at home. And based on that, it'll perform some activities. So this is the area section. These are the events. So we have some pre-configured events. So whenever I leave home, the profile is changed to normal. So whenever I'm at home, during the daytime, the profile is normal and at night, the profile is changed to quiet. You can even configure it according to your own requirements. The best thing is you can pair it up with Tasker and do a lot more cool features. Next we have this profile. So these are basically your sound profiles. And finally, this is the recent tab where we can see the locations that you have visited or the cell phone towers range which we have been or the cell phone tower range in which we have been. So this is one cell tower and this is a cell tower in my area. So do give it a try. It's a nice automation app based on your location and it doesn't consume a lot of battery. Next we have GSM battery monitor. It can be used to track your battery drain. And as the name suggests, you can use this app to track your battery status. 
so you can use this button and you can see the graph so this green line so you can see a climb over here represented using the green line which actually represents that the device was charged during that time and you can see that the curve is very steep i don't know exactly if this device has quick charging or not but it definitely charges from maybe 5 to 100 in less than one and a half hour and then we have this other graph or the other part of the graph showing how the battery got discharged so if you go to the right tab to the other section i can even narrow it down so when the screen is turned on the battery was draining quickly and when the screen is off the battery drain was very slow so you can get all these kind of useful information using gsam battery monitor next we have media players so we have both vlc and mx player so mx player is definitely the winner but you get ads in the free version so if you don't want ads you can go with vlc media player both work the same way but but i find mx player to be more fluid and very smooth to use next we have swipe pad with the screen this big you can't always access every part of the screen every time so if i'm holding my device like this i may not be able to access home and if i hold my device like this i might not be able to access the top part of the phone so mostly i use my phone like this and i have all my frequently used apps right near my thumb so using this particular application swipe pad i can easily access my frequent apps simply swipe from the right corner and that's actually a trigger and i have configured it in that way you can change the trigger to whatever you want so if i simply swipe from the rightmost corner of the screen i get this swipe pad or these are all the pads and these are the just the two apps that i've configured so if i hover over this app and release my thumb or the finger it will open up that app so if i want to go to home from any application say es explorer i don't need to press the home button i can simply swipe and there's a shortcut for home and there we have it i'm at home there are many other multitasking apps but i find this to be very useful next we have something called as light flow and using this particular application you can change the led light colors based on the app notification next we have t torrent client which is a torrent client you can download torrents using this particular application this is the light version and that's why you're able to see ads and you also have a paid version t torrent pro so the only difference that i found from the paid version and the free version is that on the free version you can only have a maximum download speed of 2 mbps and that's it so if you don't have an internet connection about 2 mbps you can stick with the free version and i have tried other torrent clients and i found this to be working really well other torrent clients didn't download the entire torrent most of the times so anyway next we have gallery vault which is my favorite and the number one gallery vault in the google play store or at least according to me so this is the gallery vault you can basically hide any kind of file whether it is a picture video text file or a zip file or anything it basically encrypts it and hides it and you can arrange those hidden files in folders you can unhide them all at once or export all the hidden files to a specific folder and you can even move these hidden files to the sd card from settings so you have both the free version and the paid version and the only important difference is that on the free version you can hide only some limited number of files and in the free version you have some additional features so do give it a try next we have quick pick which is a gallery app so if you're not satisfied with your default gallery app you can definitely use this so the best thing about it is it gives you a lot more features or a lot more options than your normal gallery app if this picture has any location based information you can check where this picture was taken so show in map and if this picture had any location information it will show you exactly at which place this picture was taken it has some nice cool features like that but apart from that it is really very fast so that was just the first time i used it so it was just creating thumbnails so anyway the next app in our list is last app so this is the ui and if you have been noticing there's a light bubble or a red bubble over here near my thumb so if i click that it will simply switch to the last app that i've used if i click it again it will take me to quick pick and if i'm at google chrome and i want to switch to quick pick which was my last app i simply do that and i'm in quick pick so instead of pressing the recent button and selecting the quick pick or the recent app you can simply use this toggle or a button to quickly switch between apps and you can also choose to enable that feature or you can even do that by pressing and holding the home button and selecting last pass as the action so whenever you press and hold the home button you'll simply switch with your last app so anyway next we have push bullet which is the number one app or the must have app on any android device 
Using this particular application, you can sync your notifications to your PC. You can sync your SMS to your PC. You can reply SMS and WhatsApp messages using this particular application directly from your PC. So you need to enable these options for it to work. So if you want to check out your messages, you need to enable these options over here and install the push bullet extension or the app for your PC, whether it is a Mac or a Windows PC. So the next app are the maps application. So you get Google Maps pre-installed. So if you want a really nice smooth experience with Google Maps or maps, you can definitely use this. You now you have the options for offline maps and you can download offline maps of an entire country or even a state, I guess. Now Google also provides you to download offline maps. You can download the map of your entire city and it will be about 10 MB or 20 MB at max. The next app is here maps, which is a very good alternative for Google maps, but the UI experience or the entire user experience of this app isn't as smooth as Google apps, but the best feature about it is you have offline maps. You can download the entire map of a country and move it to your SD card. So that's something Google Maps doesn't offer and you can even have navigation using those offline maps. Google has provided navigation in offline maps too, but here maps is the one that had it first. So anyway, do give both the apps a try and use the one that you like the most. So these are the apps that comes pre-installed, Truecaller, Evernote, Google and Shareit. So as most of you know, Shareit is an application to share files over Wi-Fi. You can basically share files with Android phones or even iOS phones or even from your Android phone to your PC. So all that can be done wirelessly. So do give it a try. Next we have Evernote, which is like an extended version of Google Keep. So if you take a lot of notes or if you want to keep your information organized, then you can try this. Next we have Truecaller. So you need to enable few stuff. You need to register for this particular application or service. And once you do that, whenever you get a call from any unknown number, Truecaller tries to find the name for you. Truecaller also offers you option to block spam callers and gives you a notification when a spammer calls you. And this is Google app, which is used for Google search. So just in case, if you want to turn on the OK Google feature from any screen, this is what you need to do. Press the menu button over here, select settings and then select voice, then select OK Google detection. Then you need to select this option and say, OK, Google three times. OK, Google. As I'm using the screencast, I'm not able to do this now, but you can, but you can enable that feature from here. Next we have the dialer. So this is a replacement for your stock dialer. It is called as EX dialer. And I'm currently using a custom theme, ice cream sandwich theme. And I have been using this for many years. And this is currently the free version. And as I've said, this is the theme that I'm using black ICS. So if you're not happy with the stock dialer, you can definitely use this. Next, we have some replacement or alternatives for SMS application or the messaging app. So first one is hello, which is a very beautifully designed app. You have two modes, I guess the day mode and the night mode. So just go to settings and enable the night mode. And there you have it completely in black and white. It has some nice notification tones and this is the app that you must definitely have if you are looking for something very simple to use. And if you are looking for something with advanced features and themes option, Textra is for you. So you have some nice options like blacklist or disable notification and mark all messages as read. So you have these cool features in this particular application and you don't have these same features in hello. So that's the reason I'm using Textra and not hello. So these are the two SMS applications you might want to try. Next is my number one app. So this is the app dialer. So if you just check my app dialer, there are more than, I guess, about 100 apps over here. I find it really lazy to search through the app drawer to find one particular application. So I use app dialer. So this is like a T9 keyboard for applications on your phone. You can even search contacts, but I disabled that option. So let's say I want to open MX player. I need to press six and nine as M is at six and, and X is at nine. So MX and I have the MX player. Next, if I want to open Google play store, I can search for play P is at seven L at five and A is at two. And there you go. Play store. So in this way, I can easily access any app with just a few clicks. I don't need to search the entire app drawer for that. Next on your K4 note, you have a shortcut. So whenever you press and hold the home button, 
you have these options to choose from any of these applications. So I usually pick app dialers. Whenever you press and hold the home button, you get these options to choose the default application to open. So I usually do this. I usually select the app dialer as my default app. So from now on, no matter which app in, so from now on, no matter which app I'm using, I can simply press and hold the home button and the app dialer opens up. So in this way, I can easily switch between multiple applications. And if my thumb is not near my home screen or the home button, it will be here. So I can simply swipe and I can access the app dialer. So that's basically my setup. So anyway, coming next are the keyboard applications. This is TouchPal. So let me just give you a quick demonstration. So this is the keyboard, cool gestures. Like if you swipe up, you'll be entering numbers. And if you swipe down over here, you'll be entering symbols. And you also have swipe. And if you swipe from the back button, it will delete the last word. And apart from that, you have some navigation keys. And you even have a clipboard manager. And recently they've added auto expander. Let's say if I want to enter my mail ID, say XYZ at google.com or gmail.com. I can create a shortcut for that say, say like MID and it will open and it will replace the MID with my mail ID. I just hope you understood what I said. If you didn't, just give it a try anyway. Next, if you're not next, if you're not really interested in all the gestures, but you use swipe a lot, then you should definitely try Swift key. This works way better. This is the best app for swipe. So it doesn't have all those cool gestures like touch X, but the swipe on this particular keyboard is really amazing. So this is how the keyboard looks. So finally guys, we have Greenify, which is an application that stops applications from running in the background. So this works really well if you have root access. And even if you don't have root access, you need to enable few permissions for it to work and it will still work. So anyway, you can simply press the plus button and add the applications that you want to block or stop and press the OK button or the tick button. So now whenever you press this button, these particular applications will be stopped. So if you want to enable automatically, you need to enable this option and give the permission for accessibility. So now whenever I press this button, it will automatically stop all the applications all by itself. And whenever I turn off the screen, all these applications will be stopped in the background. So if you have root permissions, you won't even see the app info page. So using this particular application, you can definitely save some RAM and battery. So there you have it guys. These are my list of must have apps on Lenovo Vibe K4 Note. So if you think I missed anything or if you have any better suggestions for me, do let me know by commenting below this video. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel to see more videos just like this.